This is Spirit in the Torah with today's Torah portion, Matat Masi. Matat Masi is the last Torah portion of the book, Bad Midbar, or Numbers. And it has to do with making a vow or a promise. And we know that Yeshua is the Word of God. He is the Word of God in the flesh. And so the Word is very important. And so this has to do with making of a vow. In Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, If a man makes a vow to Yahweh or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall by no means break his word. He should do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old. Now this is Matthew five twenty three. You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to Yahweh. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So from Yeshua himself, it's obvious it's very important what we say and how we react to the Word of God. Moses reminds the tribes of past vows, of vows they had made, and he reminds them of this in Bad Midbar or Numbers 32 9. For when they went up to the valley of Eschol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel, so they did not go in the land which Yahweh had given them. So Yahweh's anger was aroused on that day, and he swore an oath, saying, Surely none of these men who came up from Egypt, from twenty years old and above, shall see the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kizanite, and Joshua the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed Yahweh. <clears throat> now from this, this event here, is where the anger of the Lord would be so aroused, and this would be in the time frame of uh, the, the three weeks of, of tragedy, which would culminate and end on the ninth of Av, which we have just recently had. So the, these vows not being made to enter the land is what you could see the tragedies begin with Tish B'Av. And we know in Tish B'Av, the ninth of Av is when both temples were destroyed, um, among other many other horrific tragedies for the Jewish people. Now, in Mark eleven thirteen and following, it says, And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Yeshua said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again, and his disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went to the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Now in this verse, you hear the spoken of the fig tree. And it's very important to understand that a fig tree represents uh, Israel. It's not the only representation. Many times the menorah is a representation of Israel and also an olive tree. But in this case, it's the fig tree. And so you see, it says it wasn't the time of figs and the, and the fig tree was cursed. That prophetically speaks of how the Jewish people from the time of Yeshua all the way up into today have basically not really been bearing the fruit that they're supposed to bear, which is the kingdom of God, which is showing others, uh, the Gentile people, uh, for example, that, that, you know, the kingdom of God is coming to earth. And so because they weren't, uh, didn't fulfill this responsibility, the fig tree basically dwindled away. But it doesn't end there. We go to Mark eleven nineteen. When evening had come, he went out of the city. And now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And so, in an essence, Israel, for almost 2,000 years, didn't exist. But now, since 1948, Israel has become a nation again. It's a marvelous and wonderful sign. 
which we see which speaks about this in Matthew 24, 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. <clears throat> and he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. Here it is again, the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its roots, you know that summer is near. So basically here, you know, in the last uh, section, we talked about how the fig tree was cursed, and that's Israel basically under a curse. And now they, when, when you see the fig tree Israel becoming, you know, back, when it becomes restored, when it becomes a nation again, and it begins to put forth its leaves, then you know summer is near. And we thought, okay, what's, what does that mean? Well, before sun, when, when you have summer, of course, summer is right before fall. And we know <clears throat> that fall is the season and the time when the Lord's kingdom comes to this earth, as in Sukkot. So <clears throat> in verse 33, so you also, when you see these things, know that it is near at the doors. And he says this, Assuredly, I say to you, the generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So in other words, or another way to say it is, when the generation of people that are alive on this earth that see Israel as a nation being restored and beginning to bear fruit, and by the way, they are bearing fruit because many Jewish people in the land of Israel are now followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, many thousands. Of course, that's still a drop in the bucket, but it's an incredible a beginning, you could say. And so in Nahum 1.15, Behold, on the mountains the feet of him who brings good tidings, who proclaims peace. O Judah, keep your appointed feast, perform your vows, for the wicked one shall no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off. So we can see that the kingdom of God is expanding, and it's amazing. We see this in Colossians 4.2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant, in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Messiah for which I am also in change that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in the wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer one another. So just keep in mind in these days and times we're living in, that the Lord will provide. He will give us the way. We see this in Luke 21, verse 11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. So we're in these days, we're in these times, we really truly are in the, in the last moments before our Lord returns. So we have the words, but the words are not necessarily in our minds, but they are in our hearts, and they will be brought into order at the appropriate times when they're needed. So it's wonderful what the Lord is doing, that Israel is being restored, that many Jewish people are coming to faith in their Messiah, and it's exponentially growing. And as it says, when we see that fig tree blooming, know that summer, that his time, that the time when Yeshua would come and be back on this earth is not far away. And the kingdom of God, which is actually already in us, will actually manifest itself on this earth soon and very soon. So God bless. Until next time.